everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our side series, Lake on Lounge. Today we're going to be taking a look at Virtua Cop 2, released in 1995 for the Sega Saturn and the Model 2 in arcades, and then re-released on Dreamcast in 2000. I had this game when I was a kid on the Saturn, and I absolutely loved playing it. I had the light gun, I had the TV, and I played the ever-loving hell out of this game. I think I actually got it for Christmas with the light gun, but anyways, I have a lot of backstory with this game. So when I was actually playing it for the Dreamcast, I was kind of surprised to find that I didn't love it as much as I remember. It's definitely one of those things where my nostalgia was stronger than my actual enjoyment of the game right now. Now I will say that it's still a really fun light gun game, so you can make some great games. But there's some moments that feel particularly difficult, like right here you'll see these enemies are shooting at me before they even really appear on screen. Unless you hit them in the leg with a perfect shot, you are going to take damage there. Granted, like all arcade games, they definitely want to take your quarters, but that one felt particularly unfair to me. Maybe as a kid I had a better aim, or maybe as a kid I didn't care as much because hey, it was a video game, and who doesn't love those when you're like... 12 years old, but as an adult actually critiquing these games, I do see where they're kind of deficient, and I would say the cheapness factor in this particular one is there. Now as far as do I recommend the game still? Absolutely. I have a Japanese copy because this game didn't come out in North America regions for the Dreamcast, and I think I paid maybe $5 at the most. So you can definitely have this game in your collection extremely cheaply, and you'll have a lot of fun playing it, even if it doesn't hold up as well as it did in the 90s. Throw a second player in, have a beer, I think you'll have a really fun time. Now, I will say, I'm not sure if it's my Dreamcast or how I'm capturing these, but there's some distortion at the top of the screen, and that was present on the TV as well before the capture device. Obviously, I have to have a CRT TV in between the Dreamcast and capturing, or else the light gun wouldn't work, and it was visible on there as well, so I think maybe it's just a coding error or some other sort of graphical artifact. Maybe it's just my particular Dreamcast, but I didn't really test a second Dreamcast because I only have the one, but if you see that on your screen, maybe that's just something that was there. I do like this car segment here. It definitely doesn't look like a Dreamcast game. You can definitely tell that this was ported from a weaker set of hardware like the Model 2 and then brought to Dreamcast. Um, a lot of the enemies are very blocky. There's a lot of polygons, but if you can look past that, there's definitely still a lot of fun to be had and you get these incredible zooms that Sega loved doing in their light gun games in the Virtua Cop series. I would say that I think Virtua Cop 1 is still the better game, although that's going to be on the Saturn, and I'm not going to be showing that in the series because I don't have that. Weirdly enough, that's a blind spot in my collection. It's extremely cheap, but for some reason shipping was more than the game cost itself, and I really hate paying double on shipping, so I decided to show you guys Virtua Cop 2 instead. But I definitely recommend you play both of the games because they both are still fun. Although I'm curious what you think if you didn't grow up with these. I was born in 84, so in the 90s when these games were in arcades, I loved video games. Obviously I still do, I have a channel dedicated to it. But I grew up on these, so the nostalgia factor alone means I've loved light gun games. But if you're like 20, 21, 22 and you're watching this, leave me a comment below and tell me if you enjoy them because I'm assuming you really didn't grow up with them. Although with the advent of VR right now, I feel like they're having a little bit of a renaissance. Things like Super Hot VR or any of the other VR shooting games operate in the same way. Obviously there's not a big TV, it's just a VR headset, but I feel like this sort of gameplay is actually coming back. Now I will say that this game's getting a lot harder. Uh, you can change the difficulty level, but I think I'm just on normal. But as far as the difficulty is concerned, it definitely ramps up in the later missions. And now we're on a train, and I swear Sega and Light Gun developers love trains. I mean, you saw in Confidential Mission, we were on a train. Now we're playing Virtual Cop 2, we're on a train. We're even going to go out of the train and back into it, just like in Confidential Mission. So I feel like, I don't know if it's just a Sega thing or a Light Gun thing in general, but you're definitely getting a lot of train segments on them. I think it's just the moving thing. You get boat sequences, you get train sequences. You're always definitely moving around that it makes the shooting a little bit harder. So I think from a challenge perspective and from a gameplay perspective, it was definitely popular popular with Sega. And now we're pulling into a subway, and you're going to see a subway in House of the Dead, you're going to see a subway in Total Vice. These are definite like tropes of the light gun genre, where these sort of settings always come up. I think it's just kind of a fun observation. Here we are on Dreamcast Street, and you're going to very shortly see an ad for Shenmue. So overall, I definitely recommend Virtua Cop. And it's really easy to recommend because it's only like 5 to $10. If this was a $30 game, I definitely think I might say, you know what, I would avoid it because it's not as good as some of the rest of them. But pick it up, play it, enjoy it. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. We'll be back on Tuesday with another episode. But have a great weekend. See you next time. Bye-bye.